On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of this week's digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I'll have a report from Montauk where I'll be using the latest lures from Missouri. I'll go around the map with all the fishing action and our correspondence check-in from around the island all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, June 8th, 2023, and we're coming to you from Marlena's Yacht Club in Montauk, formerly known as the famous Liars Saloon. This marina has everything a fisherman would need, including gas, diesel bait, ice showers, and more. I'm here to try out the latest from Yozuri in Montauk waters, and later in the broadcast, I'll share with you my results. Now, let me tell you what's going on in this week's digital edition of the magazine. Don't overlook docks and pilings when targeting fluke. We will have some great tips for you. Scott Newhall has a great read on windbreaks and how they can hold fish. Then for you freshwater anglers, Kyle Quinn has a great article about targeting carp. Then Bob Mickelson has a cool, some cool facts about killies or the mummachog. That and more in the current digital issue. A good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine is that you're automatically entered into our Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks gets you 12 glossy print issues and all the digital issues sh sent to your inbox. It's the best deal going out there. And now let's go to the 2023 Dreamboat Challenge update. Now it's time for the Dreamboat Update. A windy and rough weekend didn't stop our hardcore Dreamboat anglers from trying to make the most of a lumpy situation. Two new category leaders fell this week and both were impressive fish. Massimo Pulverenti notched a 16.13 pound bluefish for the category lead and Mike Briggs brought in a 10.179 pound Nantucket flute to take over the flatfish lead. We also saw a 8.53 pound fluke entered by John Bratz, landing him second place. Luke Citarelli and Andreas Brundler each made a play for the top weak fish spot, but fell short at 8.5 and 8.45 pounds, second and fourth place respectively. Rounding out the leaderboard changes is a pair of sixth place fish, a 2.2 pound porgy landed by Paul Alberano of Medford, New York, and a 2.76 pound sea robin entered by William Morrison of Huntington, New York. A name to watch is John Bratz with a 2nd place fluke and a 10th place weak fish on the board. He could easily move up the rankings with a high placing fish in any other category or a substantial weak fish upgrade. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha. Along with many other great prizes, visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now let's get to the upcoming events. The Surf Rats Bowl tournament started June 1st and that continues through July 5th. This Friday, June 9th is the Manhattan Cup benefiting our service members. Then on Saturday, June 10th is the South Shore Invitational Charity Fishing Tournament out of Robert Moses and I'll be there as the Waymaster. And one more for the June 10th date is the New York State Outdoors Day at Hempstead Lake State Park. Then on June 15th and 16th, it's Scotty's Offshore Shootout at a Point Lookout. Mark your calendar for June 22nd as the town of Isler puts on a free freshwater clinic also. To get all the details on these events, visit thefisherman.com slash events. Now let's head around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. Here in Montauk, the bite for stripers and bluefish has been excellent right off the point. A mix of bucktails, flutter spoons, and diamond jigs are all catching. Some of the bass have been into the 40s as well. Porgies also made a better showing in Montauk this last week with some jumbos heading to decks for the party boats. And while fluking was still a bit slow, the Montauk stars saw a doormat over 12 pounds hit the scales during the week. Hopefully a good sign of things to come. I also just returned from my trip with Chris from Yozuri along with Captain Savio. And while we had bass over 40 pounds off the light, 
it was tough to get through the 10 to 16 pound bluefish. We ended the day with a dozen bass and as many blues as we wanted, all on mag poppers, surface cruisers, and bucktails. Along the south shore, the wind and weather played a part this week, especially the weekend. But during the week, the slip gut became less of an issue, and by the end of the week, fluke catches seemed to improve. The largest fluke I heard of was a 9-plus pounder caught on the fish finder out of Captree. For weak fish, Ocean Beach and the Copeg Holes still seem to be the best spots. For blues, the large ones can be found outside the inlet of Fire Island. The offshore scene is starting to heat up as well, with a nice 300-plus pound bluefin reported out of Babylon Fishing Station. West of that, fluke action took a bit of a downturn as water temps in the bay dropped. Far more shorts than keepers were found. The top areas still were Meadowbrook Bridge, Swift Creek, and the Fundy Bridge. Bass and blues were the most cooperative species during the week. Clam bellies nailed both species near the Meadowbrook, and small tins also bagged blues as well. Bass also fell to trolled mojos and flutter spoons in the ocean off Jones and Rockaway Inlet. Weak fishing slowed down on the full moon tides also. Bluefin tuna have made an appearance at the mud hole and in the rockaways. Along the north shore, fluke fishing has picked up tremendously in some spots and remains picky in others. The best fluke fishing seems to be around Port Jeff area, both inside and outside the harbor. The keeper ratio he there has been as good as three shorts to one keeper, whereas fluke fishing in Smithtown and Huntington Bay have a ratio of one keeper to ten shorts. Porgy fishing remains exceptional across the sound and inside the Peconics with plenty of jumbos being taken. Bass are still central but seem to be moving east to the grace and the gut. Bluefish are loaded from west to east still and are active on the early mornings on topwater lures. For the surf, the South Shore saw a solid bite this week with stripers up to 47 pounds caught and released. Several others in the 20 pound class were also caught in South Shore inwards. Montauk additionally saw a nice wave of bluefish along the sand beach and around the point. And for those following along with the Montauk Surf Masters Tournament, Gary the Toad Stevens beached a 42.64 pounder to put himself in first place for the competition. Now let's get an angler's weather forecast with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, a general overview on the upcoming weekend across Long Island. So our water temps are holding around 60 degrees, haven't warmed up too much with the haze, the fog, the smoke we had this week. I think we're okay Saturday. A little northwest breeze, you know, looks good, you know, near shore. The sound, the bays look okay, the surf looks okay. For boaters offshore, I think we're okay Saturday afternoon. A little four to eight way offshore, but I think it's going to miss us. I think we'll be good for Sunday. The worst part of the weekend, if you're going to be in the ocean, probably Sunday afternoon as a southwest breeze kicks up. So northwest about five to ten, five to fifteen Saturday. Uh, looks okay with some clouds and maybe a little bit of rain though, you know, scattered light rain. I think that kind of breaks up Saturday night, and then we go a little more southwest on Sunday midday afternoon, but, you know, light and variable early should be good for some stuff in the ocean. I think it'll be okay. High tides, uh, north shore early morning Saturday, uh, south shore for about midday early afternoon. High to uh, temp Saturday, 60, 70, still a little cool, 70s near 80 on Sunday, a little warmer. We'll check the Guru, a little different look there. There's Saturday, you know, not bad, you know, north-northwest, you know, maybe 5 to 15, settling down the afternoon, seas maybe 2 to 3 in the ocean, looks good. Sunday, okay, in the morning, not bad, light and variable, and then we start to get a little more of a crank from the south with the sea breeze after about 1, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. But overall, good-looking weekend, not too bad whatsoever. Be safe as always, catch them up. Matt, back to you. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Things are still going strong. Uh, striped bass on the bunker pods has been amazing all across the east end, more west, really everywhere. Uh, I'm seeing bass 50 plus pounds. So honestly, these things are looking like dinosaurs. Uh, Gator blues still prevalent. Um, obviously a ton of fun on light tackle and top water. Uh, so a lot to keep you entertained. Thanks, Matt. So as Will said, the inshore bite, especially bass and blues, is still remain super strong, um, really on fire. Porgies have still remained strong here, us and sag, as well as weak fish, still remaining very strong as well. Um, and, you know, especially even some thresher reports now, um, especially along the beach out in the, uh, near Shinnecock, 
Um, and then finally, the tune report's been picking up as well if that weather window can hold. So I'm really hoping this trajectory continues, guys, and looking forward to next week. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Still having some good bass fishing going on in between Shinnecock and Mariches out in the ocean. Uh, buddies were out late Friday afternoon, got into them on the bunker pods. Over the weekend, wind was a bit of a challenge, but they were still able to find some bunker pods. Bass were a little bit more picky. I tried off the beach. I didn't get down. The inlets had some fish, but, um, you know, real, real long walk down to Mariches uh, with what's closed down because of the plovers. Um, so, you know, they're around back in the bay, some, some fluke to be had, not a lot of keepers, usual spots, west of Ponquag, all, you know, through Mariches and Great South Bay, weak fish in the holes, weak fish still in the Peconics, uh, like the other guys uh, will cover in their report. And, you know, still some bluefish around, but that's seriously thinned out and a lot smaller right now. Haven't heard a whole lot on tuna, uh, talking fast and about <laughs> because he got the Manhattan Cup tomorrow, really fired up. Ray Marine, Island X Lures, Steiger Craft, uh, Yamaha, Ray Katina Auto Group, Ryan Lowry doing the lunch for us, Salt Mafia, No Life Bait Needed. All these people in the fishing community coming together, including the Fisherman Magazine, to make this happen. So we get 50 veterans out for an unbelievable day that's going to help them in their path to healing. Uh, can't wait for it. I'll be posting. Fisherman's going to be posting on both. Uh, I'll be posting on my feed, the Manhattan Cup feed. So keep an eye out for that. Team Rockfish, I think, is going to take this one with uh, myself, my buddies, and Adrian Moeller. So really psyched. I'll have all the details for you next week and hopefully some more fishing reports. Let us know how you do, how you do over the weekend. If you're going to Manhattan Cup, see you Friday. Get to bed. From Northport, we have Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Glad to have you back for this week's report. You know, I'm doing it right here in our Hail Sight uh, shop. It's the second shop. We've been Northport and in Huntington. It's fantastic. Come on down to 135 New York Avenue. We've got everything here. There's pizza, you got 7-Elevens, uh, the village boat ramp. Um, wow, Shamrocks across the street. Prime, there's so much to do. There's a lot of action. Just hang out in a picnic area that we're building right now. You watch the people jogging by or hang out and wait for your new pals. You know, there's so much fishing to be had. Right now, the fluke is still really good. It's on the outside for the most part. A lot of these fluke have dispersed. They, they tend to head a little to the west and then shoot to the north and then turn around. Look at those rock piles because a lot of the smaller porgies, your larger fluke, you're going to be targeting them. So you're going to be in rocky, sticky structure. Make sure you don't want to just uh, leave the rod in the rod hole. You want to stay on it. Practice your jig and make some chicken rigs. Use uh, large strips of bait. Nothing uh, too exotic, but those fish, they're going to be tight to the rocks. you got to be aware of that you want to avoid your snags. Also, there's a lot of bluefish out there. The bluefish have been sticking um, there anywhere from the Triangle over by um, Cold Spring Harbor area right down to Crane's Neck. So there's a lot to see, a lot to do. Striped bass fishing remains red hot. Uh, the, getting them on the fly, on the flooded jigs, trolling wire, chunking. There's so many varieties, clamming. You know, you got to remember if you use your bait stick with your circle hooks and uh, watch for that slot. And it's really important to revive the fish. You know, unfortunately, we've seen some of these really large fish belly up, and uh, that's a tough thing to see, you know, especially the way that uh, the release relate, uh, the release uh, rate can be sometimes. So uh, just stick with it. Uh, bluefish, porgies, like I said, porgies are everywhere, whether you're on the beach or the boat. There's so much to do. Get the chum, go do your clamming. Visit us down here on the Hale site or our, or our Northport location. You get the same customer loyalty points. Great service. You know, the Huntington place, we keep bringing in stock every other day, so um, it's filling up with all your needs. Always give us a call. It's the same phone number. Or go to our website, Cal Harbor Tackle, uh, or just Google us, and um, you can call up, find out, get more direct reports, and talk one-on-one -on -one with the guys. You know, we love talking to our customers, and thank you so much for supporting our family business. We really need it. We couldn't do it without you. And as always, I bid you all peace and tight minds. Let's check in with Captree Bait and Tackle and Fuel. Thanks, Matt. I just want to let everybody know that fluke fishing has officially turned on. Uh, the charter boats are doing great. Even the Captree Pier is doing great for the people that are going out. Uh, the air quality, you know, is still an issue. But people are fishing. Um, so uh, about half the blues, it used to be, you know, every single cache you, you would get a bluefish. 
now since that kind of died down fluke has turned on weak fish has turned on um it, even crabbing and striped bass have been doing great we've been getting bass off the piers we've been getting them on the beaches um it, it's honestly it, it the bluefish just kind of killed everything else and now that they're you know moving out whatever it's working out for us so uh get out there and uh, if anybody's interested, we're actually hiring uh, local college kids for the summer and fall. So let us know. All right. Uh, go fishing. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Matt. Uh, Fire Island fishing is still holding up. Excellent. I've been catching bass limits every day. And, uh, and the weak fish bite down at Ocean Beach and West Channel, it's kind of hit and miss. One day's good. The next day isn't. I think a lot of the fish that were at Ocean Beach camped out there have moved out into the big bay. So I think down maybe at Hector State Park, uh, that might be a good area to try weak fishing, range channel, running down towards Hector and uh, West Channel and even the north end of West Channel. So uh, let's hope that improves some fluke fishing still spotty. A few decent fish being caught. I would not say it's red hot, but it's just a, a pick at this point and improving every day a little bit. And the slip gut situation has improved greatly at fish today and I, virtually by the inlet I had no slip gut problem whatsoever and uh, caught a limit of striped bass. So that's it, Matt, for this week. Uh, catch them up and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>
and have everything posted. I also have a playlist with all how-to videos. Again, all the stuff I'm doing personally, I'm putting it out there and, you know, showing you guys. If you need it, you can always check that out as well. Other than that, that's my report. Stay safe. The smoke, I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, I wouldn't breathe too much of it in like I'm breathing right now. But uh, other than that, that's my report. With our Flying Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, uh, as far as the freshwater goes, well, I was been guiding a lot. I guided three times this week. I had a young couple last Thursday and uh, never touched a fishing rod, let alone a fly rod. And yet, we were able to get a couple fish into the net. Uh, they were very, very happy. They wanted to try it out. Um, good for them. That night, I actually guided somebody who had an experience, but he just wanted to kind of fine-tune things. Uh, he did very well. He, he must have had, oh, he must have stuck about 20, 30 fish. He landed over 10 into the net. And a lot of them were on dry flies. Today, I was out guiding. Guess what? Thunderstorms really shut everything down. Uh, it was tough, very tough fishing. We were able to get two on uh, slump busters. As far as the salt water goes, I ran a trip last week to Cap Tree. Weeds, wind, we ended up jumping over to the backside of uh, Robert Moses, and we were very able, we were able to put a few fish in, into our hands. Uh, Luke, who had a nice striper, and Kenny had a, a bluefish, and there were several bluefish hooked, but they were like knives through hot butter, you know? It just was, it just, they broke up. But anyway, it was good to get out. There's always options, check it out. So until next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. I'm reporting live outside of Bernie's Bait and Tackle. Tomorrow, Friday, is the Manhattan Cup. Taking out veterans, super excited to participate in that. There are a lot of big bass out in the ocean, 45, even 50s and over on big bunker uh, schools. I think this signifies uh, the, the end of the, the run. These big ones are pulling up the caboose, so get them while you can. There will be some holdovers, particularly in New York Harbor. Uh, the bluefish have invaded Jamaica Bay. They are super aggressive, feeding on small baits. So bring out some uh, very small metals. Uh, very small diamond jigs. Uh, the bass are focused on big bunker, the blues on smaller baits inside the bay. And I think the blues have cleared out most of the stripers in the bay. Also, a lot of shark activity, makos, threshers, giant monsters, uh, and some other uh, fish I'm gonna be tight-lipped about. But uh, get out there, check out the Manhattan Cup Friday, and uh, back to you, Matt. Let's check it with David Rogers, Dave. Thank you, Matt. Fishing remains to be on fire in the Western Sound. There are big bass and gator blues swimming in our waters. This past week, the bluefish bite has been non-stop. Anglers have been hooking into gator bluefish after gator bluefish using topwater lures as well as swimming lures such as the SP Minnow and Yozuri Magdarter. Funky Fisherman Dave was out on the water and caught over a dozen gator bluefish on the flats during low tide. When it comes to big bass, Frank Puglisi on Instagram landed this beautiful 40-inch bass while live landing a bunker by the bridges. This bass was caught at the top of the incoming tide, which seems to be when the bite has been turning on lately. We also got big schools of bunker pushing into the bays, which explains the abundance of bass and blues swimming around. Snagging some bunker and cutting them into chunks has also proven to be catching bass and blues pretty consistently. Porgies have been showing up more consistently and are being caught on worms and clams in the bays and in the sound. But the bigger schools have yet to arrive, but should be here any day now. Fluking still remains to be slow, but if you put in the time, there are keepers out there waiting to be caught. Well, that's all I got for this week's report. And as always, guys, make sure to check out Funky Fishing on YouTube to get a more detailed look into what's biting around the island. Stay groovy, everyone, and back to you, Matt. Let's check it with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western South. The striped bass fishing on the backside of this full moon was simply amazing. I got out a couple nights chunking and the chunk bite is lock and load. I was fishing some of our deep water reefs and we found some really quality fish. We had some big bluefish in the mix too. The bunker are really starting to flood our harbors now and the shallow around the island. So fishing shallow with docks or even live bait drifting is really productive right now. We've seen some nice fish come on the fly rod around rips, shallow boulder fields, and then, you know, plug-in, bucktails, you name it. 
Our deep water reefs are still holding a lot of fish, so flutter spooning, you know, trolling mojos, diamond jigs work really well. And then in the deep water, in the daytime, the bluefish seem to be settling in. So if you want to have some fun with the family, go out in the deep water, find them finning on a flat day, or troll some wire with umbrellas and deep divers. To our west, the striped bass uh, bite still remains really strong. Places like Mamaroneck, 32A, down to execution. I saw a lot of big bass caught this past week way west, so that means we have another wave starting to come through. And also, they're smocked up in really big bluefish um, down to Mamaroneck. I saw a lot of big blues this past week. You know, fluke fishing on our side still remains a little slow. There are people finding their limits, but, you know, you really got to pound these areas. Squid strips, smelt work really well this time of year, and spearing. Shallower water seems to be your best bet, but can 26 and can 24, that would be like the best bet to try. Other than that, a lot of people are still shooting across. There's a lot of sand eels up against the beaches over there. So when you're marking clouds of bait, drop down, I'm sure you'll find some fluke. I know a couple guys have been shooting across, you know, a couple times a week and they're finding their limit every time. There's a lot of shorts, but you just got to keep working through them and you'll find your limit. The porgies are really starting to flood the beaches now. And we've seen some pretty big fish caught from Sherwood Island and Calf Pasture Beach. And then, you know, high-low rigs, clams, squids, you know, I mean, they'll take a lot of different baits. Small bucktails, gulp work really well. And then guys on the boat are doing better on our deep water wrecks and reefs. Places like the Celtic Wreck, 28C, 11B, and the deep, deeper parts of Green's Ledge. Always remember to bring clam chum, you know, that really brings the fish to your boat and you can really get a bite going. All right, thanks and good luck. Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, has the report from around the city. Fishing continues to go on strong and steady here in New York, Long Island, South and North Shore beaches, Western or Eastern Long Island Sound, all around. Fishing is great. A lot of fish have moved on east, but the fish are still passing through in, on, in waves. Uh, I went out uh, yesterday well, with my buddy Raul, Brandon, John, uh, retarded guys. I'm talking insane fishing. Not just one day, multiple days within these last two or three weeks or whatever, guys. Fish from 20 all the way up to 40 something pounds being caught. All on lures, no bait needed, guys. Top water, if you wanna throw your SP minnows, you wanna throw your bucktails, you wanna throw your darters, you wanna throw your custom lures, whatever you wanna throw, they're there, guys. I'm talking, we were on the beach maybe uh, yesterday with like 10, 15 people, all of us hooked up. I looked to my left, my right, everybody's hooked up. Uh, non-stop for hours. Uh, even other outings as well, just as good. Uh, non-stop action. Anyway, a lot of the bluefish, it looks like, have moved on eastward towards Montauk. Um, and now it's just pretty much a good concentration of just striped bass on the beaches. Um, we, we, you know, lock and load fishing guys from the minute we get there to the minute we leave, leaving them biting kind of fishing. Anyway, um, I don't know what to say, but um, they're hitting anything right now from plastics to hard, hard, you know, lures or even top water. Um, but ridiculous fishing right now, guys, you know. This might be the last wave, I don't know. I'm gonna keep trying. I usually taper down on the fishing and not fish too hard, but uh, I think I'm just gonna continue to keep on as long as I can. If you'd like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the NY metro and Long Island area, and especially from the beach. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact my producer at tcslibayrat at gmail.com. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts all online now and free shipping with orders over 100 bucks. It's the perfect for gift for yourself or that angler that you know. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Remember to like our video, subscribe to YouTube channel and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. We hope you're enjoying the weekly video fishing forecast. Please leave any questions or comments on our YouTube channel. Fish safe and we'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.